guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. As you can see, I am joined by the just frequently requested player, Lemon Tree. Now, Lemon Tree is a Korean pro player who excels in Expo. I actually asked him a few questions about himself like before this video because it's going to be a long one. I basically want this to be the 2.9 Expo video, a video that you guys can even bookmark if you want to and kind of go back. Or who uses PC? Do any of you watch from PC? I said bookmark and I'm like, dude. Does anybody bookmark things anymore? Anyway, this will be like the definitive video here on the channel for Lemon Tree Gameplay, who I consider to be one of, if not the best Expo player in the game right now. So we're just going to watch tons of matches for him. Now, granted, this is early season. This is his first push of the season. Right now, we're starting this video around 900 in the world. We're going to try to push up to top 20 in the world, and we're going to stay here, show every single win, every single loss for as long as it takes. I want to kind of ask you guys as he almost takes down that right tower i'll play it do play by play throughout the entire video except for this very first match here that we're doing i expect excuse me there to be a lot of wins in this video but we will see i want to throw the question to you guys i was just getting into a uh, disagreement i guess certainly not an argument with molt expo is one of those 2.9 specifically it's just one of those archetypes, right? Where some people think it is the absolute lowest skill, uh, you know, archetype or deck in the game, right? And then there's another group of players who think it is the highest skill archetype or deck in the game. And just the kind of the juxta juxtaposition of those two point of views, it just makes Expo the most polarizing card in the game. I think that I am on the side of it being high skill Every pro, almost every pro that I've asked has ranked to either the highest skill uh, deck in the game or like top three, top five. Now, almost every just, I don't know, I think people who are being super emotional about it, including myself, just don't like facing Expo and they rank it really low in the skill department. So I ask you guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, just in terms of skill. And then you can let me know in terms of annoying, like on a scale from one to 10, how annoying this deck is. And that I certainly would be more uh, more likely to agree with you guys on. Uh, one and a half or two months ago, I had Vulcan on the channel ranking every deck uh, by skill. And he actually had 2.9 Expo as the number one uh, highest skill cap deck in the game. So today we have, you know, the number one player of maybe the number one skill deck in the game. Uh, just, you know, to provide tons of fun content for you guys, hopefully. And this one's going to be a victory starting out here and made it look really, really easy in the background. Let's go ahead and move on to match number two of which will be like 10, 15 matches. All right. So here we go in match number two against Dooms here. And you know what I want to do is more so than just, you know, provide the play by play here. I really want to get into like the habits uh, that, that let Tree displays so you guys can pick up on them even if you're not a 2.9 expo user hopefully this will you know give you hey maybe maybe we'll make a believer out of you and dooms it looks like is playing uh 2.9 himself so now we have the mirror matchup here in the video we start out by splitting archers in the back and doom starts out with a defensive expo now i know one thing about uh expo right oh it's expo pump too this one could be even more annoying than 2.9 the expo pump and we don't have fire Fireball in hand. It looks like we're cycling to a fireball here to go ahead and use it on that pump. It's going to be interesting here to see how we deal with this matchup. So we cycle a bunch of cards there and we finally get that fireball launched on that pump in the back right. Now we have a mini P.E.K.K.A. and an Ice Golem. The one thing I love about Lemon Tree, just the reason I love having him on this channel, the reason so many of you guys request him to be on the channel is how he uses his cycle cards. He is just so incredible with when and where to cycle his cards and the defensive plays that you guys are going to guarantee, I guarantee you, because it's been this case every single video he's been on, the defensive plays that this guy plays, especially on the trickier matchups, is going to absolutely blow your mind. I'm, I'm, you know, again, this is live here, but I am confident in saying that ahead of time. So here comes another pump, and again, we just go ahead and use our fireball on it. So here, a uh, minute and 45 seconds almost approaching into this match, not much going on. It looks like we're cycling again the left, and we go at a defensive expo of our own here. So I wonder what his strategy is going to be. Obviously, it's going to be building up two expos. 
uh, almost thinking that the opponent dooms here while uh, knowing that dooms does not have a big spell in their deck so cycling logs here in the meantime in the left hand lane let's see if we go expo oh we do so we went expo there because it's double elixir time so we totally ignored that pump let's see if he can break through Fireball, instead of the pump, goes on the expo. He really wants a connection here. Now, in the meanwhile, he's cycling all of his cycle cards, trying to protect that expo. He does a great job of doing so, and now we get the lock. All right, so here we go with Archer's played. A log to push that mini P.E.K.K.A. back, and we get a really, really lucrative lock there, taking that tower almost pretty much into spell cycle range. So we go with the defensive expo again. At this point in the match, I think that we've... You know, with Lemon Tree, I think we've won it already. Let's see if we can play some defense here. Now, what you really want to do is protect your defensive expos in a mirror matchup. It is so essential to protect your defensive expos. And you're going to receive protection on both the expo and on the Tesla. What a great kite there, by the way, with that Ice Golem. But another expo here for Dooms. Now, we're going to try to protect it. And we do. Archer's down. We need to get that Tesla down. We have an Ice Golem down away from that Tesla. Now, eventually, finally, we lock on to that Expo. You can see this is almost like a chess match here, guys, in terms of these Expo players against Expo players. Nice job there, just allowing that Expo to do work on the defensive end. So that was a really nice, uh, but again, going back to the point I was trying to make there, is you'll see uh, Lemon Tree do a great job of protecting defensive expos and defense, defending uh, defensive te Teslas. Jesus, Ash. Come on, man. Get it out. All right. So now it looks like we might get another lock here. No, he has, oh, he goes with the offensive expo, but that's going to give us a lock there, guys. We go with the Tesla to counter the expo, but now it's just a log and a fireball away from a match victory. There's the log. There's the the fireball and gg two wins in a row uh many more to come be right back all right here we go into match number three against aragorn <laughs> almost said aragon aragorn here in the third match start out by cycling skeletons in the back and we go ahead and log that tombstone immediately so i'm thinking graveyard or thinking lava hound here and it's Lava Hound. Lava Hound right on cue, dropped in the back left of the opponent. We go immediately opposite lane. You guys are definitely going to want to watch the habits uh, in this match specifically, right? It looks like Lava Clone maybe with that flying machine. We get that lock on there, get about 1,000 HP off of that right tower, and we're not going to respond to the flying machine. Actually, the Tesla gets one shot off against that flying machine. Now we go ahead and Ice Spear immediately, and then again, doing a great job distracting that baby dragon there. Also putting the skeletons down against that Barbarian, also logging the Barbarian. See what I mean about protecting the Tesla? He really, really protects and values his Teslas there. And you can see why right there, right? And unfortunately, a Baby Dragon hit does give Aragorn the advantage here in terms of damage. But we go immediately with another Expo, not even delaying there, not waiting for the Lava Hound this time. So a Lumberjack and a Mega Minion, Ice Spirit and a Fireball. And now we have a Half Health Expo there, chipping away at the uh, Gray, or the Graveyard, the Tomb stone and now we're gonna get a lock there skeletons to distract the flying machine and we get another few hundred hp off of that right tower flying machine comes down perfect placement and timing with the ice golem he never lets you down just little tiny plays like that whereas a mediocre player or a bad player uh would just you know mistime that ice golem or misplace that ice golem but not lemon tree never makes those kind of mistakes so here it goes i'm thinking the last card has to be clone right guys uh, anyway, we'll see. We have Expo down. It looks like the opponent might give it to us. Let's see. We can just go with the Ice Spirit here. I think we can just ignore that Barbarian. We do. And the tower is going to be down. Now we just have to defend and double Elixir to pick up this victory. Now, a nice Ice Golem to pull that Baby D away from those Archers. Poison is the last card. Poison Doves come down from the opponent. So let's see, Fireball rains down after the Lava Hound pops, and the Tesla is just out of range, but it's okay. At the very last second, we had those Archers down, finishing off that Flying Machine, so defended again. This guy's the same. Bookmark this, but you add it to your cookies, <laughs> whatever the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, 30 seconds remaining here, guys, and it looks like the Tesla's going to finish off the aggressive. Uh, throw in the towel, forfeit the, forfeiting this match with the Mega Minion and the Poison on the King Tower. That 
is how you face Lava Hound. So taking away the keys to that victory, we when he dropped uh, Lava Hound, we immediately went opposite lane with the Expo. He was willing to naked log on all of those uh, or those early pre-placed tombstones, and then protecting your Tesla and using your Fireball after the Lava Hound pop seemed to be the keys there in that match. Let's move on to the next one, guys. All right, here we go, guys. And immediately a Goblin Barrel comes down. We fireball it. Obviously not having log in hand. Uh, starting out against a log bait deck of some sort here in the fourth match of the video, I think. Uh, we will see. So a log comes down from the opponent as well. I'm playing them for perhaps a classic log bait. So we'll see how we do against potentially a rocket matchup here. Dark Goblin comes down, but immediately dropping that Ice Golem just in the nick of time again in that left lane, able to mitigate any tower damage. Now we're going to use this Ice Golem as kind of a tank here, and we drop our Expo. Wanting to see uh, what cards the opponent has, and there it goes. We talked about it. That's the rocket. Unfortunately, getting a lot of value there, taking down not only our Expo, but also our Archers. It's okay, though. We can kite this uh, Prince around. Will not take any damage. Perfectly placed Ice Spirit in the well play that comes down from the opponent. Now, this is one of those matchups, too, that getting around that Rocket's going to be interesting, right? Uh, but the Rocket doesn't kill Expo, you know? So we can still get a few hundred damage, even if they do Rocket every single time. Just have to be careful with the Tesla having it too close to the Expo. We're providing too much value with those Archers as well. So here we go. It's going to be a Goblin Gang coming down the left lane. We go with the Fireball there. So happy to take some Fireball value. Eh, I'm not sure of this value, but, you know. Minus one elixir tray, but we get the tower damage as well, and we can fast. We can, we can quickly cycle it with this deck as well. So here comes a big, a big. We dropped the archers last second. We're just gonna log all this back, you know. Now he catches us without any spells in hand because we used uh, previously. We had used the uh, the log as well, or the the fireball as well. So we take a lot of damage actually to our left tower. Nice damage advantage for the opponent. We go with the expo instead. So knowing we didn't have a great answer in hand, we decided to go ahead and just immediately play that expo in the opposite lane and now we have the Ice Golem there actually predicting that Dark Goblin and the Archers are there to finish it off and now just like that we have the damage advantage uh, in this match into Double Elixir Time we go immediately with the Defensive Expo to snipe that Princess and it does a good job of doing so one of the few, uh, you know, things in the game that can actually uh, match range with a princess. Log comes down against that Goblin Barrel, and now we're going to try to chip away a little bit at that right tower, forcing a log out of the hand of the opponent. We go with the Ice Golem in the left lane to uh, meet up with that prince in the left. Now, here we go. It's going to be a Goblin Gang coming down, too. Place those skeletons to make sure the Ice Golem did not take the brunt of that prince charge. Nice Ice uh, Golem there, or excuse me, nice skeletons there to stop that prince charge. Now we're just going to op opposite switch to the other lane, all the while fireballing in the right lane. So notice how he kind of ignored that tower when there was 500 HP, figured he can get two fireballs on it, and started focusing on the left. And that was very well played. We're going to pick up a victory there. One fireball is already back in hand, and there it is. Two seconds, one and zero. That's four in a row, guys. See you in a second. All right, guys, here we go against Angel Ramirez. And he's laughing. He's coming out laughing here. Finally, someone who uses an emote. I think it's the first one we see in the entire video. And Lemon Tree doesn't use emotes either, so we will see. Looks like no one's starting out. We go with an Ice Golem just in front of the uh, King Tower there. Lumberjack down from the opponent. We go with the uh, defensive Tesla. So we have Skeletons and Ice Spirit in hand, likely. Can just protect this, uh, this Tesla. We go with the Skeletons. See how we placed the skeletons away from the Tesla? And the, that actually worked out well because the opponent had the zap ready. Now we cycle the Ice Spirit and the Log in that left lane. Cycling two cards, we still have that Tesla barely alive there on our side of the arena. We go with the Ice Golem uh, countered into, or played, excuse me, into the same lane as the P.E.K.K.A. and the Ice Wizard. Luckily for us, so Fireball comes down. Luckily for us, Tesla is like, the absolute best counter, the absolute best weapon in the game against Pekka. And the laughing already coming down from the opponent. Okay, here comes a balloon. So a naked balloon is played here. We go with the Expo. Now that's a play that I was not expecting there. The, the naked balloon. We do get a very small lock, getting a few hundred HP. Lemon Tree's not too happy about it there. And, and uh, the opponent laughing about it. So, Elixir pretty much even. We might have like a one elix Elixir advantage halfway through this contest. Let's see. I love that Sparky emote the, the spectators are using, by the way. That might be 
It's not better than the. Uh, it's not. Let's let me be clear. It's not better than the hidden. Te the, uh, the the Inferno Tower emote, but it's up there. I like it. Might be my second favorite emote. What about you guys? What do you think? All right. So here we go. Ice Wizard in the back. Lumberjack in the back. We go with the Expo immediately. And the Expo does get a lock onto the right tower. Zap comes down, though. Going to retarget our Expo. Notice how we did not support that Expo this time. He knew that the Fireball, or excuse me, the Balloon was in hand. He has that Tesla place to pull it. Then he had the Archers to assist. Very well played again defensively. You can tell that Lemon Tree is just kind of one step ahead of, the oppo of his opponents. One of the questions that I asked Lemon Tree actually was, Do you, okay, so you're, you're godlike at 2.9. Do you consider yourself really good at other decks, at any other decks? And he said no. <laughs> it's just like, but I'm like, wait a second. You're so good at like cycling and precision and placement and all that stuff. Why don't you think you're good at any decks? And, and nice skeletons there too, keeping that expo alive to get a few hundred more damage off of that right tower than Relentless switching to the left tower here. And again, we do get that hit. Archer's down, Ice, go, uh, Ice Spirit down as well. Uh, but yeah, so he said no. He said he's not good with any other deck. He said he's a total one trick. So uh, I think his definition of good, though, is like top five ladder, right? So anyway, we're gro going into uh, double elixir time, or excuse me, sudden death overtime. And we go with the pre-placed Tesla in the middle. Then we go with the expo opposite lane of that P.E.K.K.A. Going to be able to easily defend the Lumberjack. And it looks like the P.E.K.K.A. maybe. So a split lane attack here. Balloon coming in the right. We fireball that balloon. Stay away from the Expo. Expo stays alive. We'll take the death damage though. But hey, does a lot of uh, damage to that P.E.K.K.A. Then lives on to lock onto the right tower. Now the right tower will be fall lower than the left at 1393. We are 22 seconds remaining until triple elixir time. We fireball not only the ice wizard, but also the P.E.K.K.A. And we log everything back. Skeleton is played. Zap is down. Unbelievable support of the Expo here. And again, the opponent has nothing to do but laugh at this point. Very well played. He played incredibly well that match. So far, I think that was my favorite match of the video. But there's plenty more to come. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so no losses so far. Uh, will that be the Curse of Ash? We will see. Meyer comes in from the opponent to open things up here. So a nice diversity in decks so far. Haven't played against a Miner deck, I don't think yet. Uh, and it looks like it might be a Mortar deck. I don't know, Miner Bait or something like that. Either way, we log away those Spear Goblins and Bats come down for the opponent. Archer's putting in a little bit of work for us in the left lane. No damage, but Sparky comes down. So it is a Sparky deck. We immediately respond with the Defensive Expo. Oof. I've said this before on the channel here, guys, but Sparky's one of those cards that, you know, when it's dropped, <laughs> you're like, okay, panicking. I always panic. Like, okay, d that's the Tesla placement you want, because I've seen him do this many, many times before here on the channel. But that's the Tesla placement you always want against Sparky. Unfortunately, Sparky does get a hit against that Tesla there, but I think we'll be okay. Oh, I scroll in the very last second to make sure Sparky does not connect with our tower. Lemetry not too happy about that defensive sequence. We do take some damage, mostly minor chip, I believe. 2835 remaining on our left tower. So going against a giant Sparky bait with the minor as well. Minor, as we kind of predicted here, Minor, not that big of a deal. The very reduced tower damage. Uh, so here comes Mini Pekka's the last card in his deck. So now Mini Pekka and the Giant come down. This is not an easy matchup, guys. But again, if anybody can beat it, it is Lemon Tree. Nice job protecting this Tesla again. Very well played there, but uh, it looks like we have nothing for this Miner. We can't let that Miner ship a full health. We have to be very protective over our towers, right? It's not a... It, if you're down a tower playing 2.9, playing any Be Expo, really... You're screwed. It's almost an automatic loss. And that's part of the reason people say it is a high skill cap deck, going back to the argument we talked about at the opening of the video, is because if you lose, unlike any other archetype in the game, if you lose a tower with Expo, you're dead. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible against any player who knows what they're doing to make a comeback when you have a tower down. So here we go. It's going to be another giant Sparky push in the right. And wow, it does a really good job shutting that Sparky down in the right. Sorry, had a little technical difficulty there, but we're back. And uh, But there's a lot of minor chip damage in the left, guys. And here we go. Good game comes down from the opponent. We haven't even touched their tower this match, guys. Let's see. Can he get a connection? No. Giant's back in hand. 
Skeletons on the Giant. We go with the Tesla as well. Bats down on the Tesla. Spear Goblins down on the Tesla. We log away those Spear Goblins. Uh, one Spear Gobbo still lives on, though. Good game comes down again from the opponent. And here we go. Expo finally gets a lock on. And we go with the other Expo on the other side. Giant comes down. What we want to do here is keep the opponent from attacking our weak side tower. So that's why we're switching sides, even though we got that Expo connection in the left. Here it goes again with the Miner. That's a great spot for you guys to take notice of. You always go with the Ice Spirit in back of your Princess Tower. That way, the Miner, even if it's not placed in the back, it will give you time to reset and then distract that Miner. So again, going with the defensive Expo here. This one's not over yet. Sparky way in the back. And again, we go with that same Tesla placement there in the right-hand lane. Here comes the Giant. Split Archer, split Skeletons, have an Ice Spirit all in the back. Go with another Expo in the left lane. Here comes those Spear Gobbles from the opponent. We go with an Ice Golem to eat that first Sparky hit. Skeleton's now going to eat the second Sparky hit. Meanwhile, another Giant in the left lane. We play defense against that Miner. Zap comes down. The opponent Zap cycling now on our left tower. Gets all the way back to a Miner again. Fireball misses the Miner. Oh, man. Well, you got to hand it to Lemon Tree. I think this is going to be his first loss. I don't know. Zap cycling out, maybe? We'll see. We go Giant right side. Mini P.E.K.K.A. right side. We have the defense of Tesla still down. Got to hand it to him for not throwing in the towel here. He is giving it his all. Again, logging away. Skeletonsing away. Skeletonsing? Skeletonsing away. The Miner from the left tower. Keeping that tower alive, but just barely eating some Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the right. We have Archer cycled in the left. Zap cycle. Another Zap comes down. Miner goes into the right. Oh, man, just too much to handle in a very fast cycle on the opponent's deck. Allow them to always have a giant in hand. First loss of the video. Let's hope it's our last. Let's go. And that was a Curse of Ash. Damn it. Let's go into the next one, guys. Alrighty, guys. Here we go. It is David, our next opponent. And the WoW comes down. Ten seconds in. No play has been made. You know, I've noticed that Lemon Tree doesn't wait more than 15 seconds into matches to wait for the opponent to make the first play. He'll always play either an Ice Golem or Archer Split. It seems like Archer Split seems to be his go-to first response. A log comes down, stopping that Dark Prince from getting his charge off. That's going to allow the Tower and the Ice Golem distraction to finish him off. Now the death damage of the Ice Golem will kill those bats as well. Cycling our cycle cards in the back, Zap comes down from the opponent. So what could they be playing here? Bats, and uh, it could really be anything. Arrows, too. So arrows come down against one of those princesses, or one of those archers, and we go, another giant! Oh, man! So it's another giant deck here, and a musketeer played in back. We log everything back, trying to buy more time for that archer to get some damage in. What do we have here? We go skeletons. Nice distraction. Holds that giant to one hit, and oh, that was such beautiful... Oh, my word! That was, that was such a small interaction there, but waiting on the Skeletons, Ice Spirit to reset at the very perfect moment, that Musketeer. Those are the things I really appreciate about Lemon Tree's gameplay. I don't know about you guys, but Mini Packet comes down the left lane. Skeletons are down. This time we can't avoid that zap, but notice how he's always playing those Skeletons a little bit to the, the side, to the right in that case of the Expo, just making sure we can avoid those spells if the opponent makes the mistake of placing them too close or maybe even maybe even predicting right so here we go again it's going to be uh tied in elixir here 15 seconds remaining in single elixir time the well played comes down by david david i'm not sure what, what side of the arena he's referring to on that well played but we go with the tesla and the expo so i notice how he sets up against beatdown especially or any building targeting any decks with building targeting units he sets up with the Tesla there on the defensive side first, and then he plays his Expo immediately afterwards. So again, Skeletons played after the Tesla falls, making sure we take no damage to that right tower. Then we go again, mirroring that Dark Prince in the right with the Ice Golem so we can set up our, our uh, Expo here. We knew he was going to place the Mini P.E.K.K.A., so we're ready with the Skeletons and the Archers. Arrows comes down, unfortunately. We go with the last second Tesla. Then we go with the Ice Spirit and make sure the Dark Prince did not get a charge. We'll get one Mallet hit on our right tower. But man, this is difficult. You're seeing how good you have to be of a player to contend with a giant player as a 2.9 player. So here we go again. Expo, beautiful, we'll take down that Expo. No zap in hand to retarget just yet. Arrows come down instead. 
Again, we do get that lock. We get the damage advantage of two one seconds remaining here. But will it be enough, guys? Archers! Oh, we do take one giant hit, but we play the expo immediately. So now the damage advantage goes in favor of the opponent. But we were able to save Elixir there. We're going to have a strong offensive stand here. Oh, oh, the zap in the last second to keep that Musketeer alive. That was a crucial zap by the opponent. Forces a log out of us, too. Uh, we do get a temporary lock, though. Ice Golem is down to kill those bats, forcing arrows again out of the opponent's hand. And we go with the strong expo in the... Oh, we beat the Dark Prince! Do you see how decisive he was with that expo, guys? He did not delay even a quarter of a second. Immediately when he had the elixir, immediately when he could, he placed that expo. And now that's going to finish the game. And Sparky was the last card. So Giant Sparky beat us last time. It's not going to do it again. Uh, very, very well played there. See you in the next match. All right, guys. Here we go again. Zerdo LG. Man, so far so good. I think we're like 7-1 or something like that, it feels like. Uh, I'm just going to let him keep going until... You know, maybe after a couple more wins, we will check to see where he is on the leaderboard. But so far, so good, I would say. So we start out with Skeletons, and we go with the Archers. No play from the opponent, so we immediately go with the Offensive Expo. Nice arrows there by the opponent as well. We waste the Ice Golem. So a rare mistake here by Lemon Tree. Obviously, I'm assuming he pre-played uh, that, uh, that Ice Golem, and it dropped after we already saw that... All of our other units were dead. Nice job from the archers there, placed in the last second. We do take some damage, but we, we hold on to the damage advantage. However, we don't hold on to the elixir advantage. I guess we do when you consider that we have three elixir on the board right now. So an E-Wiz forced out of the hand of the opponent. Let's see what we go. Go with a the log there, perfectly timed and placed. To make sure we don't take any damage. And again, about a 300 or so damage lead in our favor. 50 seconds to go in single elixir time here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If you like this video, let me know because maybe I can do more like it with kind of the best of a certain archetype, you know? Uh, anyway, here we go. Ice Spirit's going to go ahead and stymie that Inferno D. Valkyrie is played by the opponent. We're going with our archers. Let's see the... Okay, no big spell by the opponent. Nice job delaying on that Tesla, though. This is going to be another nice defensive sequence. Protecting that Tesla, Ice Spirit, and Log. Making sure we kill the Valkyrie and the Hog and the Inferno Dragon from that push. Very well played again. I love his defense. So 10 seconds remaining here in single elixir time. Let's see what we do. Oh, by the way, guys, one thing I wanted to point out. In all these matches so far, I might be wrong because I haven't been paying attention to it the entire time. But I want to say the Elixir leaked. We've never lost Elixir leak. Look at this match. 6.6 .6 Elixir leaked by the opponent. How much have we leaked? 1.1. Lemon Tree does not leak Elixir. Rarely. Rarely does he leak any Elixir. You know, a little bit, but never as much as the opponent does. And that's something I want you guys to pay attention to. Maybe even rewind and see how much he did that earlier in this match. But it just how does it, it points out again how decisive he is with this deck. Very rarely does he does he have any elixir leakage, or I should say, you know, much. <laughs> so here we go, defensive uh, Tesla again, and again with that expo. So again, the like as I said earlier, right when the opponent has a win condition that oh the hog, the hog does the lightning, the surprise lightning comes down here. It's okay because we still get a lock, and then we protect, uh, figuring the Inferno Dragon or the Valkyrie we played, and that's going to be GG's. So the Lightning comes down, but it costs the opponent very, very dearly there, and then the Fireball ends it very, very well played. Uh, see you guys in a sec. All right, guys, here we go inside the next match against this guy. Uh, Russian player, I guess, or Hungarian, I don't know. Anyway, here comes the uh, Miner. This time we catch the Miner in the obvious spot. And we go with the Ice Golem to distract. Skeletons will finish off that Miner. Nope, maybe make it, maybe... Nope. Zap does come down, but no Shovel hits on our left tower from that Miner from the opponent. So we split Archers in the back. Baby D from the opponent. This is the uh, the point in the match where we're trying to figure out how much of... Or, or what... It's kind of exploratory portion of the match, right? The very first Expo. We just want to see how the opponent is going to try to counter our Expo. Nice Ice Golem again there to distract that Baby Dragon. Now we kind of have an idea. Okay, Valkyrie is probably their go-to weapon against our uh, our Expo. They also have Miner. They also have Fireball. So they have a few kind of defensive options at their disposal. 
So one set, oh, one minute, excuse me, into the match. We split archers again and back. They go with the uh, tombstone. And actually, we catch that miner with the archers. And the skeleton finishes off. So again, no damage there at all. Now we take down the tombstone, thanks to the expo. Distract the baby dragon, thanks to the ice golem. Beautiful job finishing off that uh, baby D. And uh, the expo did enough damage to the Valkyrie to deny any hits on our right tower. Halfway almost through this contest. So it looks just pretty even here again. Zero leakage here by Lemon Tree. Let's see what he does here. Do we have archers back in hand? If so, he'll probably split. We will see. He goes with the Expo. So Expo played. Inferno Dragon comes down. We have Ice Spirit in hand, though, I believe. Okay, we opt not to do anything here. So the opponent, we realized that the opponent used 7 Elixir there to counter our 6 Elixir Expo. So I think it was a, a very wise decision not to do anything. Now we leak a little bit of Elixir. We go with the Log on the Tombstone. So, okay, it's a Lava Hound deck. All right. I wasn't 100% sure there. I guess it was obvious now in hindsight, but it is a Lava Hound matchup. So here we go. This time we catch that Valkyrie at the last second. Again, just making sure we're distracting that baby dragon. We go with the Archers on the defensive end. We get an Expo Lock on the right tower. So ice, uh, the Ice uh, Spirit does connect with that Lava Hound, and now we have two Teslas stacked in the center. We had the Skeletons played along with the Ice Golem, keeping that cycle alive, making sure we have that Inferno Dragon uh, distracted, and we have that Tesla putting in work against those pups. We have Archers to pull everything back to the center. Uh, ice Spirit, unfortunately, does not distract or not work against that Valkyrie, but it doesn't really matter. We get a lock on, taking the tower down to 1455, so we're holding on to the damage lead with five seconds remaining here in this regulation of this match. So again, trying to distract that baby dragon away from the Expo. Skeleton's down along with the log on the Miner. He's really supporting this Expo. And we get a small temporary lock again on that right tower. Looks like we're going to eat this baby dragon. Do we go archers? What are we going to do here? No, we're going to eat the whole baby dragon. We're more than happy to have the opponent switch lanes at this point. Doesn't matter to us. We go with the Expo right underneath the Lava Hound. That's going to keep that Lava Hound away from the tower. Also going to kill the Inferno Dragon with the Tesla. Fireball comes down again from the opponent. It's okay. We're getting some log chip damage and a nice job defending there again by Lemon Tree. Ice Spirit to pull everything together and again, immediately another Expo. Relentless with these aggressive Expos. And again, we had that Ice Golem at the ready. So Fireball's back in hand. Are they going to use it here? Well, they're going to use the Valkyrie instead. See how aggressive he is uh, in double Elixir time. And we're about to cross over to triple Elixir time, guys. Here we go, Baby Dragon again. We're going to let it go again. We go with the Expo again, right under the Lava Hound again. And Tesla is down. Here we go. It's going to be the Miner. Miner does not come down in time, but Zap does come down. Fireball comes down. Fireball exchanged by both of these players. If we can defend here, we can just Fireball cycle out. Here we go. Ice Spirit is down. We're log cycling all the while. Ice Golem down to distract. And three Archers uh, get all absolutely annihilated by that baby dragon. But it doesn't matter. Log Fireball for the victory. GG's with 32 seconds remaining. Let's go into the next one, guys. All right, guys. Here we go into the next match here against uh, Lona. Luna. And uh, we'll see how we do. So, so far, man. Hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Here we go with the Ice Golem there to intercept those bats. Also, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Go with the defensive Tesla here. If the opponent starts out with kind of an offensive threat that we have to respond to, we usually go with the Ice Golem, and sometimes we go with the defensive Tesla if needed. So Log comes down there just making sure our Tesla stays alive, stays healthy, and would not run into that Mini P.E.K.K.A. And as soon as a Sparky comes down, we go with another Expo on the offensive and opposite lane. So let's see if the opponent has Zap. Where do they plan? I think they might, like, Giant Zap this. We'll see. There's the Giant. Ooh. Minion Horde. Okay. Uh, we go with the Tesla. We get a lot of damage. We go the Archer split behind that Tesla. This is going to be a huge push, though, guys. Ice Spirit is down. Oh, no. That's, oh my god, the Ice Golem down just in the nick of time. Skeletons are down. Arrows are down. Luckily, the Skeletons played high. Does kill the Sparky, but not before she gets one hit on our left tower. A rare Sparky hit onto one of Lemon Tree's towers, which he protects very well. So here we go, guys. Almost halfway through this match. Lemon Tree not happy about it. Again, a very rare hit 
uh, by the opponent there. So can we stop this deck that has mini P.E.K.K.A. and minion horde in it as well? Can we stop it in double elixir time? We will see. We log back the mini P.E.K.K.A. Let's see. Oh, only one mini P.E.K.K.A. hit. That's going to allow us to take down the right tower. Now we have to defend. Here we go. Oh, the Expo locks onto the, uh, the Sparky. Oh, man. What a huge, huge, huge sequence here for Lemon Tree. Skeletons pull those bats into the center with the Giant, and that's going to be GG, guys. When Lemon Tree has a tower advantage, doesn't matter the deck going into double laser time. He never loses. Famous last words. Did I just curse him? We will see. Here comes the Sparky in the left. We start out with a defensive Expo. Here's Mini Pekka in the right. So applying some right lane pr pressure as well. We go with that Tesla in the same spot, the anti-Sparky spot. Here comes the Minion Horde in the center. We have Fireball for the Minion Horde. Want to make sure we're keeping our Expo alive. Nice Ice Golem. Beautiful job as well uh, with the Ice Spirit. Stopping that Sparky, denying all damage. Again, Skeletons come down. So do the Archers to finish off that Goblin Gang. Zero damage onto our tower. Fireball comes down. Kind of a desperation Fireball by the opponent. They don't have anything to do. Now we're leaking Elixir because we don't have to make a play. This one is already won. Put it in the books. Let's move on. Alrighty, guys. Here we go against Deadline. So... <laughs> They're not happy about the matchup. People, uh, now we're getting to top ladder. I will check to see where he is after this match. But now we're getting to top ladder. People see Lemon Tree and they know exactly what they're up against here. So again, just like I said, waiting about 15 seconds or so. And we split those archers as the starting play. A Gabo gang split from deadline. The opponent, we go with the ice golem behind the archer here in the left. Meanwhile, a minor attacks in the right. Again, using that trick with the Ice Spirit and the Skeletons, we went in the obvious spot. He went on the inside with the Miner. We go with the defensive Tesla, trying to figure out what the heck the opponent is playing. They drop a Sparky down. Here comes the Goblin Barrel. We have Log and Cycle. No worries there. So taking a tiny bit of minor damage, but otherwise looking pretty good here in this match. Very early on, one minute into the contest, we go. We have the, the surviving, we have Ice Spirit in hand, right? Oh, the log comes down just in the nick of time by the opponent. Uh, we have that surviving Tesla, so if we have the surviving Tesla at half health, might as well go in right with the Expo. That's exactly what we did there. Skeletons played, perfect timing again, no login cycle for the opponent, and we finish off that Princess. Nice timing and placement with, again, the Ice Golem and those Skeletons. We split the uh, Archers in the back. Let's see, we use our log right there. Again, unwilling to take a ton of minor damage. So here comes a, probably a Goblin Barrel from the opponent now, knowing that our log's not in hand. We do have Fireball in hand though, and here it comes. We're probably just gonna go ahead and ignore this Goblin Barrel, just play an Ice Spirit against it, because the Expo will actually finish that off. And again, it's a Minion Horde by the opponent. Are we gonna Fireball here? We do. In the, is that it? <laughs> is that it, guys? And log comes down again against the Skarmy. And I think that's going to be tower down again. It won't be down, but it will definitely be in uh, fireball cycle range here. We go with the high Tesla to assassinate that princess. And again, a miner comes down, this time caught by the, the archers again. Skeletons on the opposite side of the miner. Going to intercept that spear goblin a little bit there, but not in tower range. We have the ice. Oh, my God. The ice spirit log counters that goblin barrel. Deadline can't get anything done in this match. We go with the ice golem, anticipating the princess. Instead, it runs right into the Skarmy, and now we can assassinate again. Okay, at that time, we didn't, didn't work out, but look at that Tesla. Tesla takes out half of those minions. Now we play skeletons to distract those minions as well. And now we have the ice golem to distract that princess. And again, log is back in hand for the goblin barrel man this is one of my favorite matches so far guys and again using that tesla to take down that princess and those gobbos the opponent is so frustrated right now Ooh, it must feel pretty lousy to be deadline in this match absolutely taken to school by lemon tree here one of his better matches i feel like i don't know how difficult the matchup is in terms of comparatively to like a sparky giant deck that we faced but man just insane gameplay and the white flag comes down being a good sport is deadline let's go on to the next match guys all right guys i'm uh, my bad i lied i said i would check in i'll check in after the next match to see where he is uh going against this guy 
uh, and we go in with the Ice Golem to respond to the Goblin Gang. So perhaps it is another uh, log. No, I take it back. Probably a P.E.K.K.A. Uh, bridge band matchup. We will see Bandit in the back for the opponent. We have Skeletons in hand here for the Bandit. Now we go with the Tesla. Don't need the Skeletons just yet. And a Princess again by the opponent. So interesting. We go with the Log against the Princess. And a Dark Prince from the opponent. So, Tesla's still alive. Ooh. Doesn't miss. One of those skeletons stays alive, and that's kind of all we needed there. We have the Ice Golem cycling the Ice Spirit to get to that Ice Golem again, denying all damage. Ice Spirit runs into the Prince. Now we have a big push coming in. Prince, a bandit. Fireball comes down, pushes that bandit away. Skeletons come in to pull everything to the center. Again, getting good value out of all his cycle cards, out of every card in his deck, knowing exactly how much elixir to use when he's responding to opponent's threats and how much is a waste, knowing when to just let his cards do the work. Never over-defending and rarely under-defending is Lemon Tree. So here comes the Expo in the right lane and Dark Prince comes down against us. Perfect log opportunity here, and we go ahead and use it. Pushes back that Dark Prince. Also allows us to keep cycling. We have Ice Golem in hand, too. We're going to use it right now. And the Archers are down to support this push. The opponent's getting out of Elixir here, guys, and we get the Expo Lock. Log comes down, but Zap comes down, and we're still going to get a ton of damage on that right tower and a really healthy Elixir advantage, too, with about 12 10 seconds or so remaining in single elixir time. So things looking pretty good here for Lemon Tree. And again, immediately trying to cash in on that elixir advantage goes with the Expo. So we'll probably kite this. Uh, Ice Spirit down. Skeletons will finish off that bandit. And we go with the defensive Tesla. Hot. Princess all. This time we are going to continue to protect this, uh, this Expo here. And it gets a lock on. Another 100 damage or so. Thank you very much. Skeleton's down to protect that Tesla and back at it again with another offensive expo. A high Tesla this time, stacking up Teslas in the center. They absolutely decimate that bandit. And here we go again. It's going to be Ice Golem down for the Dark Prince, making sure that Ice Golem is placed so that, such that the Dark Prince does not get a connection on the expo as well. Log comes down from the opponent. So does the Zap. Again, four elixir being used when he uses the log zap combo. That's going to give us the opportunity to keep putting the pressure on here. This time we go with the Tesla on both sides of the expo. It's the Tesla wall, and there's no way the opponent can break through here. That's going to be GG's. They threw in the towel. And again, another victory for Lemon Tree. Only one loss in this video. This guy's unbelievable. All right, we are 21st in the world. Be right back. All right, so as I told you guys, 21st in the world, and he just messaged me on Twitter saying he has to go after this match. So this is going to be the last match that I show you guys of the video. It's going to be a long one, 45-minute, maybe a 50-minute video. Uh, we will see. The opponent leads off with a knight and a tombstone. Again, guys, good time to pause the video or take a second, scroll through the comments, and let me know what you think of this format. These really long videos having one player play a specific deck. Now, the opponent dropped the baby D in the back there. Uh, why did we drop Expo? Because Expo and Single Elixir Time, if they drop a four or more Elixir card behind their King Tower, behind their Princess Towers, we're going to attack with the Expo right away. So here we go, 10 seconds, or excuse me, a minute and 10 seconds remaining before double elixir time. Looks like we're going against Graveyard. So finishing this video off strong, hopefully, against an archetype that we have not faced yet inside this episode. Tombstone comes down. Faced a couple lava decks, a bunch of giant decks, few sparky decks, a couple minor decks. Uh, quite a nice, uh, you know, diversity. No golem, but I actually put out an expo video how to beat Golem, and all it is is Golem and Giant matchups, the entire video, uh, a few weeks ago. So I'll link that for you guys in the show notes in case you missed it. Uh, so here we go, big push coming in. We go with the Ice Spirit and the Log, and nice defense there. However, we do take three hits from the Baby Dragon, so we fall behind early on in this one, unlike almost every other match that we've had so far. Can he pull off the comeback, moving into double elixir time in just 10, 15 seconds? We go with a double play. It's the Tesla and the Expo again. This deck has no building targeting units. So we do go with the Tesla in the more traditional spacing or area uh, in this matchup. 
Uh, Knight going down, chopping away at the Ice Golem. Poison coming down against our Tesla in our Expo as well for the opponent. Let's see if we go in another Expo immediately here. We do. We go same lane as the Baby Dragon. Barbaro comes down from the opponent. We go with the Ice uh, Spirit as well. Ice Golem to distract against that Baby D. That was a beautiful little sequence there too, guys. Just having the appreciation for moments like that. How he was able to keep that Expo at like 75% health. And now we go the other lane with the Expo as well. Okay, okay. Notice how he has the proclivity to do this in these matches, guys, where he will switch lanes with two Expos. We have the double lock. It's the double barrel Expo here, guys. <laughs> here we go. That right Expo is still putting in work on that right tower. Unbelievable. Taking it all the way down to 970 HP. Now we can switch to defense. We go with the defensive Expo. Let's see. Go with the defensive Tesla. No graveyard coming down this time from the opponent. Tesla putting in work against that baby dragon again, protecting our expo with the ice golem. Fireball, so we're going to defend and then fireball. We got lucky we hit the tombstone too. I don't think that was a predictive play. A defensive or offensive poison comes down for the opponent, but this one's pretty much over again, guys. Here comes the last desperate push for the opponent. Graveyard's going to be coming down here, I think. No graveyard. Dude, the opponent's not even going to play a graveyard this entire match, I don't think. Here it comes, a knight, and a Tesla, and a baby dragon. Is he ever going to use it? <laughs> we can just go with a fireball again here, guys. And, yeah, the Tesla putting in work. I can't believe it. This poor opponent can't even get a, they they're desperately want to get a graveyard down, and they finally get it down on their side of the arena. The frustration coming from the opponent. Lemon Tree has done it again, guys unbelievable this guy this has been one of my favorite videos in a while honestly guys just because geez <laughs> of how good he is 21st in the world we're gonna go ahead and end it there huge shout out to lemon tree for coming on the channel uh give him a follow on social media on twitter check out his player uh, stats and profile thanks to statsrail.com all that information will be linked for you guys in the show notes below thank you guys for using my creator code cwa i really appreciate it and a huge shout out to bren chong my YouTube partner, check out his information as well. Thank you for watching, guys. And as always, take care, guys.